Hi, <coughs> and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. Jesus probably went through the most horrendous humbling a human being was ever given. With the torture that he received before being hung on the cross for all those hours and eventually the death. And the Bible tells us God gives grace to the humble. Let's look into that kind of grace that God is talking about. Now, the grace uh, that Jesus gave to many and himself was in the resurrection. Peter says, but with the precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, there you go, gives grace to the humble, unblemished, spotless, humble, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world. God had him in mind from the very beginning, just like he had all the people he eventually called and continues to call, has appeared in these last times for their sake, the apostles and the early disciples and believers. Uh, Peter continues to say, uh, say, be subject to the elders in the church there that he was uh, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Don't wear the garish kind of clothing. Be humble in that sense. See, humility is a very, very wide sense. And then he quotes, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. Grace, unmerited pardon. He gave Jesus his life back in the resurrection and he gave him he, that life would be eternal and the grace that he had for himself he gave to the people that would become part of God's church in the early days. He said, if you uh, today, if you harden your heart, if you hear his voice, excuse me, do not harden your hearts as they provoke me. And to whom did he swear that he would not enter his rest? but to those who are disobedient. So he talked about not entering his rest because they were disobedient. Jesus entered the rest the hard way, the most difficult way, not ever having sinned and receiving a punishment as a worst criminal in the history of the world. Exaggeration. I see they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. The rest, the kingdom of God. For those who have believed enter that rest. Just as he said, as I swore on my wrath, they shall not enter their rest. So the Sabbath is such an amazing commandment. We talked about him and Noah and uh, how the, the seven days and things like that appeared in Noah. God continuously talks about his rest because that first rest that God had on the seventh day after the creation leads on to the rest after the seven thousand years or whatever the seven is there when the kingdom of God will give people who believe like Noah believed a rest and he said God rested on the seventh day from all his works and then in Hebrews he goes on to say they shall not enter my rest they can rest whatever they like to do. I can enter God's rest. How important is that? And then in the passage, they shall not enter my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had the good news preached to them, failed to enter because of disobedience. People who hear it and don't do it is a problem. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the rest of the people of God. For well, the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his work as God did from his. Now that's a complicated thing. It's not just that, that people will rest on the seventh day instead of working. But these people are also resting from the works of evil. Not that the six days of work are evil. But when you continue to do the wrong thing, in God's sight, then you're not resting from his works. You're continuing your own works. 
But as he said, they won't enter because of disobedience. They will enter if they work, if they uh, do God's works and Jesus' works. Mark says, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Because that Sabbath, he's the, he's the Lord of the Sabbath because he, he dies after being humbled. He dies and the, uh, that makes possible the seven, uh, the thousand year rest. The eternal rest in the kingdom of God and the weekly rest of the Sabbath. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. Hard to be. Difficult to be. We, we have so many things that interfere with that. The hidden person of the heart. The hidden person of the heart is the spirit in our minds which is the word of God, the superior language, that controls all the rest of the language in the mind, in the brain. He scoffed at his scoffers, but he gives grace to the afflicted. He gave grace to Jesus, the most afflicted. And Peter, he says, therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, he did, indeed, tremendously, awful. He says, arm yourselves with the same purpose that we have to suffer in the flesh, not in the way Jesus did, and no way in the, the kind of uh, turmoil and turmoil, tur uh, torture uh, that he received. But, but arm yourselves with the same person, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. It's a help. It's a proof. It's a faith. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, giving up those things that are important to us as compared to what's important to God. So, just not thinking so much of ourselves, not thinking of ourselves so highly, casting all your anxiety on him, and there's plenty of anxiety there, and we say, Father, I have this, I have that, Please, please, and we can cast our anxiety on him because he cares for us. It says for you, but for us. He goes on to say, be sober of spirit, be on the alert. I mean, there's so many things that come close to the truth that we have to be very, very alert and very, very careful. He says, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring island seeking someone to dissolve. They could not dissolve Jesus. Submit to it, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren in the world. After you had suffered for a little while, the grace of God, the God of all graces, it says, they have called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen and establish you. We have to see the better way by uh, living through these things for a while, to the suffering. He says, my son, do not lightly disregard the discipline of the Lord when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he disciplines heartily. He says, if you're without discipline, then you're illegitimate children and not son. Furthermore, our earthly fathers disciplined us, respected them. How much more rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us a short time, I seem best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, so that we may share in his holiness. You know, just thinking about the discipline here brings us sweat and uh, a shortness of breath. He disciplines us for our good so that we may share in His holiness. See past all these things to the greatness that He gives us, that rest. So we need to have that discipline for the moment, 
that's just oh, sorrowful, not joyous, yet by trained by that it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. And thank you for watching and listening.